Since the release of the documentary, The Me You Can't See, with Prince Harry and Oprah Winfrey, the British royal family is under tension. But these seem to calm down little by little. The cause was the birth of little Lilibet Diana, second child of the Duke of Sussex. According to a source close to the monarchy, the birth of Lilibet would have allowed Prince Charles to get closer to his son. And it would seem that the Queen also wants to turn the page. According to Daily Mirror, she would even have winked at Harry and Meghan Markle at the G7. At a reception, Elizabeth II appeared wearing a gold brooch from Millet jewelry. A jewel far from trivial, since it is a gift received in 2007 from the President of the Republic of Botswana. And the Sussexes are very attached to this country. Prince Charles was spotted wearing a familiar suit and sported a huge smile at the Royal Ascot on Tuesday while attending the British horse racing event with his wife, Camilla. The Prince of Wales has a preferred grey, three-piece suit, which he has worn at Royal Ascot for many years. Most notably, Charles sported this outfit to his son, Prince Harry's 2018 wedding to Meghan, Duchess of Sussex. On Tuesday, he pulled the suit out once again to attend Royal Ascot. The future king originally purchased the suit, which includes a mourning coat, in 1984 from the brand Anderson and Shepherd. But though the suit remains the same, the heir to the British throne usually swaps out his shirts and ties. For this year's royal ascot, Prince Charles paired his suit with a purple tie and pocket square, along with a black top hat. Charles seemed in good spirits and couldn't wipe the smile off his face as he was photographed laughing alongside his wife. Their day out on the horse track comes as Daily Mail broke the news that Prince Harry's wife will join him for Princess Diana's statue unveiling in London next month. Meghan Markle will fly to London to support husband Prince Harry at the unveiling of Princess Diana's statue because family relations have been strained since Harry and Meghan stepped down as full-time royals and moved to the USA. Meghan will want to be at Harry's side for the emotional event. She knows how hard it was to attend his grandfather's funeral alone and doesn't want that to happen again. The source also claimed Harry had been, given the cold shoulder by most of his relatives, at Prince Philip's funeral, with several refusing to talk to him or even make eye contact. In many families, a new baby brings people together, but maybe not so much for Prince Harry and Prince William. The birth of Lilibet could have been a big moment for the royal family but it looks like the tension remains and has no signs of thawing anytime soon. We're told the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will not be bringing their newborn daughter along for the trip, but their two-year-old son, Archie, might make an appearance. Meghan and Harry know the event is going to be dominated by Prince William, Kate and their children. The Cambridges call Kensington Palace home and have been working feverishly to make the entire event as flawless, the source spilled. The day will not just be about honoring Diana on what would have been her 60th birthday, but also an opportunity for William to take ownership of his mother's legacy, they added. The installation of Princess Diana's statue is set to take place on July 1, 2021, which would have been her 60th birthday. The statue is set to be placed and unveiled in the princess's favorite spot on Kensington Palace's grounds, in the Sunken Gardens. The insider also said the Queen would be delighted to see her grandsons standing together with their wives. The Queen has reportedly invited Prince Harry for lunch at Windsor Castle during his visit. It's a typically magnanimous gesture by Her Majesty, a courtier told Richard Eden. The lunch will be a chance for them to talk things through. On Sunday afternoon, Queen Elizabeth invited President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden, PhD, who are in town for the G7 summit to her home, Windsor Castle, for tea. While much has been written of the president breaching royal protocol while meeting the monarch by wearing his sunglasses, he may have made up for it with his special gift, according to an insider. The president gifted Her Majesty with a specially designed rectangular, lined sterling silver box from Tiffany & Co. Personalized with some very meaningful engravings. A detailed drawing of Windsor Castle was engraved on the top of the box with its four sides etched with flowers representing different countries of the Commonwealth. There was also a lengthy personal inscription inside the box commemorating the President's meeting with the Queen and expressing support for the continuation of the long-standing relationship between the United States and Britain, said the source. Royal Ascot has welcomed back racing fans after last year's Behind Closed Doors event.
but one person missing the action was the queen, marking just the second time she hasn't attended the event in 69 years. Punters were hoping Her Majesty would make an appearance, but instead only managed to catch a glimpse of other royal family members arriving at the Berkshire meet. The Princess Royal was joined by her daughter Zara and son-in-law Mike Tyndall, while the Countess of Wessex was also seen arriving at the racecourse. The Duchess of Cornwall and Prince Charles also gave racegoers something to cheer when they appeared in the stands for the opening day of racing. Queen Elizabeth, 95, missed the first day of the event, but for good reason. The monarch hosted her first in-person audience since the start of the coronavirus pandemic at Windsor Castle, meeting with Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison. However, it's very likely that the Queen will watch the Royal Ascot on TV, just as she did last year during the pandemic. Not only is she a well-known horse lover, but her horse King's Lynn is running in Tuesday's King's Stand Stakes. The monarch is likely to attend the event later in the week. British Royal celebrated the Queen's official birthday over the weekend with Trooping the Colour. Prince William and his eldest son, Prince George, are next in the line of succession after Prince Charles. There's been much speculation in recent months about what changes could come into force with a new monarchy, led by a king rather than a queen. Prince Charles has announced plans for a slimmed-down monarchy when he takes the throne, which could see some senior royals weaned off public money. Of course, one of the royal figures that garners the most attention is Prince William, the second in line for the British throne and arguably the future of the monarchy. Little is known about what a monarchy led by William will look like, despite the polls suggesting the public thinks he should take the throne before his father. Meanwhile Prince George is only seven years old, but he will soon have to step up, just like his father did, to become a working royal. Although Prince William and his son have limited powers, they both might one day have the authority to change some long-standing royal traditions, which come with taking the throne. And this might include changing one of the Queen's well-known birthday celebrations. The Queen's actual birthday is in April, but during her reign, she has often publicly celebrated her birthday on the second weekend in June. Prince William and George could decide to forego the traditional two birthdays, as both their birthdays fall in the summer. Prince William turns 39 on June 21, and Prince George turns 8 on July 22. As a result, their actual birthdays would likely coincide with good weather, negating the need for two birthday celebrations so close together. There are a lot of royal protocols, some practical, others bizarre. Some royals, including Prince William's mother Princess Diana, didn't mind breaking the rules, but there's one royal protocol that applies to William and his children. It's important, and it's certainly not one that's messed with often. It's against royal protocol for two or more heirs to the British throne to fly in the same airplane. This is rather a macabre rule, but it's to ensure that the line to the throne is maintained, should the absolute worst happen. William and Kate Middleton have broken this rule once. When Prince George was just nine months old, his parents took him on the same flight that they were traveling on to Australia. But on a trip shortly thereafter to New York, the royal parents left their baby prince at home. It's an unfortunate protocol that is a bit somber, but it makes sense. And given that the next four heirs to the British throne all exist within one family, it's safe to say that extra precautions are a must. Thank you for watching. If you liked, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. We will update the latest videos about the royal family every day. Thanks and goodbye.